We talked about Simu's lens gears before. They can conveniently be bought online for a variety of lenses, but today I want to show you how you can design and 3D print your own. And no worries, you don't need to own a 3D printer to follow along. I will use my Takina 11 to 16 mm lens. As I already have the seamless follow focus gears bought on Mobile Go, I will make gears for it zoom ring. The only thing I need to know about this lens is the diameter. I use my calipers to measure it. In this case, it doesn't matter if you use imperial or metrical values. If you don't have calipers handy, you can also measure the perimeter with a strip of paper and calculate the diameter from there. As you can see, I measured 72.4 mm, so I will note myself 72 mm. I like them a bit tighter, in case my print later is not as precise and I can always send it down later. The next step is to calculate the number of teeth we want to have in our print. So let's head to the gear parameter calculator, you can find the link in the description. Here we find three calculators, we use the second one. The diameter we have to write down here is not the one we measured before. We need to type the complete diameter including the teeth. As the ring should also have some sort of base thickness, my rule of thumb is to add around 10mm to my measured diameter, which results in 82mm in total. Now let's select the module 0.8 to make it compatible with common follow focus and will result in 101 T. Before we are done, let's scroll down the page and write down the diametral pitch of mod 0.8, which sits at 31.75. After that we have to open up a software called GearDXF, you can find the link in the description. The top left we can change between metric and imperial measurements. Next I want to type in the diametral pitch we noted before, then the number of teeth, you can see this is pretty straightforward. Hit the little icon on the top to fit the gear back into the window if it disappears. Then we want to type in the bore hole diameter, in my case 72 mm. Now we are already done, let's have our document out in a format called DXF. And by the way, if you want to have all your gears in the same size even when the lenses have different diameters, you can easily just set a high teeth count and adjust the inner diameter as necessary. I don't want to do this now, but it's very easy to do in here. The last step of the design process is to create a real 3D gear from our DXF file and we do this in Autodesk Fusion 360, which recently became free for hobbyists and enthusiasts. It's a bit confusing at times, but I'll guide you through it. With the normal import tools we can't open our DXF file, so let's directly head to the Insert tab where we find the desired option. You can press the little arrow to attach the DXF import to the toolbar. When we press the button, first we have to click the axis where we want to place our gear. I want to place it directly to the ground. Now nothing will happen, first we have to expand the menu on the right, where we now can open our DXF. As soon as we import the file, Fusion 360 will become a bit slow. The reason behind this is that our file is not a vector based drawing, but an extremely high resolution image with lots of faces, which slows down in its 3D space. When imported, we'll get a warning in the lower right corner that the file came without proper units, so it will use the defaults. Make sure you have the right unit selected, in my case millimeters are fine. To make a 3D model from our drawing, let's select the extrude tool. Point on the teeth where you get a thick black border as a highlight and click them. Now we can either drag the arrow or type how far we want to extrude it. I'll go with 10 millimeters. Now just to make sure everything is fine, I use the inspect tool and click on my inner hole in the lower right we can see a radius of 36 mm which translates to a diameter of 72 mm, so everything worked out fine. You can always adjust your design from here, bevel the edges or add text, but I'm happy now and want to export my model. Just as with the import, the normal export doesn't serve us with the right formats. To get the right file, we need to enter a little menu on the left where we expand the bodies. Click on the body and it will highlight our model. Now right click and save as STL, which is the 3D printer friendly file format we are after. As ever so often nothing happens before we enter the right menu again, so let's expand the menu on the right where we can save our file. Leave everything at default and save. Now we are done! To get a hold of our lens gear, we have to print it. If you have a 3D printer, you already know what to do. If not, you can head online and find one. I like to go to 3dhubs.com. First step here is to upload the STL file and it's a good idea to once again review that the measurements of our file are fine. If everything is fine, we can choose a hub to print from. You can sort for distance and if you want to pick it up, 
but if you don't have a hub in your city, they usually can also send it to you. When you have chosen a hub, you can choose the materials and the color you'd like to use. But these options, as well as the price, totally depend on the 3D hub itself and are very individual. I already had gears printed at a resolution of 300 microns and they work fine, but as the price is usually quite cheap, I'd recommend investing in a higher res like 200 or even 100 microns, just to be sure. Now let's send it out and wait for our gears to be printed. Yeah, I have my new ring. And you can see the print is not perfect, it has a bit of an elephant's foot on the side it was printed on. This is not so bad and I will cut it away later. Just as expected, the gears don't fit right away, as I made them a bit too tight earlier. To fix that, I can use a simple sandpaper to get it right. One technique I found useful is to use a solid round glass and wrap the sandpaper around it, you can sand the gears more evenly and much faster. If you don't have a fancy coconut oil, you can also use a can of your favorite energy drink. Another possibility is to use a rotary tool like a Dremel, but be careful not to set it too fast and try doing it evenly. Whichever method you choose, eventually you will get the gears to fit your lens. Mine is still a bit tight, but I prefer it this way. And there you have it, your very own perfect seamless lens gears. In your own design, working like a charm. I hope this was somehow useful to you, and I hope to see you next time.